Greetings, friends, and welcome to Beast Foundry. My name is Christian, and as usual, I will be your guide today. Today, I want to talk to you about one of the Beast Foundry ancestries. I know this will be our first video going over some of our ancestries, so I wanted to start with one of my favorites, the Fomorians. They are a Cyclops-like race, as you can see, and the inspiration behind these guys really is the fact that in most fantasy settings, actually any fantasy setting I've ever played, there's never been a Cyclops player race. No idea why. They are kind of quintessential fantasy. So I just really felt like there was a design space for this. And Pathfinder 2nd Edition has some really fun lore with Cyclops in general. So I thought, you know, I want to carry over with this and make a really fun ancestry. And they are a common ancestry for the world of Chandara. So you're going to be seeing these all over the place when you play. They will be in cities and towns. So they're just a, a common fixture inside the Beast Foundry world. Their adjustments are very much the same as humans. They have two free ability boosts that you can pick whatever you like. They have eight hit points. Their movement rate is 25 feet. They do have dark vision. They are a common humanoid and Fomorian is their types. We have the physical description, society, alignment, religion, all the same stuff you're going to find in any core rulebook race. Uh, getting into their heritage, we have adapted Fomorians. Uh, these Fomorians have grown up with other cultures and they can gain a free ancestry feat from a culture that they live amongst. There is the Cyclops kin Fomorian. These are kind of bruisers. They one of your free ability boosts has to be either strength or constitution, and you gain eight hit points for your racial hit points instead of eight. We have the Deep Sight Fomorian. You gain greater dark vision instead of standard dark vision, and also your dark vision is in full color, not the standard black and white. There are the Fate Spinner Fomorians that uh, once per day you can change a critical failure into a standard failure, and this is a fortune effect. And then finally, the Longhorn Fomorians, where you'll notice they have horns growing out of the top of their heads. The Longhorns are a little longer, stouter, sharper, and they gain a natural attack with their headbutt that does 1d6 bludgeoning damage. This is concussive, it is versatile piercing, and has the unarmed trait as well. As you can see here, we have quite a few first level feats. We have Cyclops Ferocity, which is basically the same as Orc Ferocity, uh, Focus Sight. We have a lot of feats that use reactions, and I really wanted to draw on the Cyclops ability to see just a tiny bit into the future. So I wanted to keep with that, and I wanted to play around with that, and I just felt there was an opening in that design space to have a lot of reactions as an ancestry, not just your class. One of the ones I think that might be a little odd when you first look at it is Future Sight here. This one is Fortune, Open, and Fomorian. Now, the reason that might be a tiny bit confusing is I did put the Open trait on it. Now, this feat, once per day, you are about to roll a d20. If this is a reaction. You peer briefly into the future and see your fate. Instead of rolling the die, you just gain a success on your action. So you still spend the action to do the whatever it is you're trying to do. Then you also have to spend a reaction. And you can simply say, I'm not rolling. I just gain a success. The reason it has the open trait is if you are choosing to do this on an attack, I wanted it tied to the first attack, not the second or third, because that's too much of an advantage to just simply ignore the map. So I threw open on there because I felt that was the best way to indicate you could not use it on those. So I just had to play around because there's not really a lot of feats that allow you to target attacks and skills at the same time. So I didn't really know how to go about it, and I just felt that this was the best way. So we have Fomorian weapon training, and what that does is it lets them treat the glaive, shortbow, or longbow as if they were simple weapons for determining their proficiencies. And this opens up these weapons to other classes besides your really hardcore martial classes. 
And it also takes other classes like the wizards that have very specific weapons they're trained with. It doesn't really open it up for them because they're still spending all of that time learning magic. So, you know, if you're a rogue, you get to add these. And if you're a wizard, you still just have these very specific weapons. They don't gain the simple weapon proficiency list. They gain the listed weapons. So it's just a way I felt that was you know, kind of kept with the the basics of how classes work and let you mix in a little more flavor with these racial weapons. Uh, Fatal Strike is a fun one, a fifth level feat. And if you critically succeed on attack once per day, you can spend a reaction. You basically, it allows you to deal 1d10 persistent bleed damage for the triggering attack. Now, the trigger is you critically succeeded on an attack roll. This could be a spell attack. It doesn't have to be a weapon attack. I wanted to open this up for, again, Fomorian spellcasters. Just because it's magic, you can still see into the future a little bit and see where to place that attack to make it do the most amount of damage. A lot of the things here are nothing super in-depth. We have the headbutt. It gives them critical specialization with their unarmed attacks. With their horns, you have to be a Longhorn Fomorian. Magical Sight, allowing you to see uh, magical auras up to a range of 30 feet. Uh, Nightmare Tales is kind of a fun one. This really plays into their culture. And they've grown up with the tales that have been passed down through generations of the end of times. And as such, you gain lore in Fomorians, but also anytime they gain the frightened condition, they get to reduce that by one step. So they have to become frightened two for it to actually stick to frightened one because they are they have grown up with these horrific tales. So they're much harder to shake. There's only one at ninth level unavoidable attack. And the trigger here is you've just failed an attack roll and you summon the power of the fates. You peer into the void to see what went wrong. The triggering attack becomes a success instead. This has no effect on critical failures. So your attack, you either if you just miss, you can move that to a success. If you critically fail, there's nothing you can do about that. And 13th level feats, we have Cyclops Savagery. You have to be a Cyclops Kin Fomorian, once per day, when you hit with an attack, you draw upon the primal might of your ancestors, you deal a savage blow, you instead gain a critical success with your attack. This is drawn straight from the Cyclops monsters, and except it's once per day. And it, again, just kind of having fun pulling with the stuff that's already there. One of my favorites is Pierce the Veil. It is a two action and this is, you can only do it once per 10 minutes. You attempt to counteract using your perception through any illusion or transmutation effect that you can see up to 120 feet. You don't end the effect, but you get to see through it. So if something is shapeshift or something is invisible or it is an illusion, you can attempt to see through that, but ultimately no one else is affected. You're still going to have to tell them. And finally, we have Cyclops Paragon. Uh, this is very similar to the Lizard Folk feat. You basically permanently gain the effects of an enlarged spell, becoming large, and you gain that plus two to damage. You also gain an increase in your hit points by your level. So at 17th level, you're going to gain 17 hit points when you take this feat. So I hope you guys have had enjoyed having a little look into this ancestry. And it's, again, one of my favorites. Uh, I'm going to be going over all of the Chandaran ancestries through Beast Foundry. And if you have liked this video, please like and subscribe. And please check us out on the Patreon. I can't do this without your guys' support. And for my patrons, thank you so much. Your support means the world to me. It really does. It keeps me going and keeps all of this moving. So... I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and until next time, game well, my friends.